Hey everyone, this is one of my crested geckos, Henry. I adopted Henry a few years ago from a friend's family who couldn't care for him. Fortunately for Henry, he's finally going into his new home. It's about time that I got him out of his 10 gallon grow out tank. Anyways, this video shows you how I converted a 20 gallon long aquarium into a naturalistic and bioactive vivarium. As you can see, I've already partially converted the aquarium at this point. Follow the link to see how I did this. From there, I cleaned off the glass using a scraper and then some rubbing alcohol. This ensures that the foam I am about to apply will adhere properly to the glass. When I was gathering materials for this build back in mid-December, I came across this awesome piece of grape wood for only $14. I knew that I had to use it for this setup. Now it was time to apply the spray foam. I'm using two different types of great stuff, gaps and cracks spray foam. To learn more about this process, follow the link. After getting a layer of foam down, I set the log in place. Then I added a little more foam and let it sit for about an hour. To complete this process, I dropped some planters into place and topped it off with more foam. Shortly, these will hold various background plants. Then I let the foam cure overnight and carved it down using a scraper. I carved a lot of the foam because I wanted to retain as much space as possible. I also wanted to make sure that Henry could climb all around the log and hide behind it during the day. In case you didn't know, crested geckos are nocturnal. So Henry here spends all of his days sleeping. After getting the foam all carved out, I applied a tube and a half of 100% black silicone. I then used a paintbrush to evenly distribute it onto the foam. After getting it evened out, I dropped some orchid bark, sphagnum moss, and finally some cocoa fiber onto the silicone. Finally, I lightly packed it and then let it cure for about 6 hours. After curing, I put the vivarium in its proper upright position. Then I tilted it to remove all of the excess materials. Of course, I don't want anything to go to waste, so I collected as much of it as I possibly could. Then I vacuumed out the rest. Next, I put the vivarium back in its original position for the last time. Once again, I'm using a scraper, but this time to remove any excess silicone on the glass or background. To complete the background, I drilled a hole into each planter like so. This will allow any excess water to easily pass through. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm going to add a drainable egg crate false bottom. I could have simply used some hydro balls or leka, but this is my preferred method, especially when it comes to larger vivariums like my 125 gallon. Anyways, if you want to know more about this, follow the link. As you can see, I added more hardware onto the enclosure as well. After getting the false bottom in place, I topped it off with a piece of window screen mesh. Then I placed a thin layer of a tropical substrate mix, which is more or less an ABG mix. To learn what it's composed of, follow the link. Next it was time to add the springtails. I'm simply going to dump this entire culture into the vivarium. This will seed my vivarium with springtails and add the vivarium's charcoal layer simultaneously. I also have charcoal mixed into the substrate. These springtails will help keep Henry's enclosure clean by making it bioactive. For more about springtails, follow the link. Finally, I topped the vivarium off with more substrate. Now let's bring this vivarium to life with some plants. When looking for plants, I wanted to get larger specimens that Henry could climb on without ruining. In doing so, I found this Calathea for $2. As is, I couldn't just put this plant into the vivarium. So I removed the plant from the pot and pulled off most of the soil. Then I separated it into about 10 manageable pieces. After doing this, it was now time to plant them. Once I was pleased with the placement of this Calathea, I added this Dracaena to the background. Hopefully this doesn't outgrow the vivarium. After getting the Dracaena into the background, I added some Neon Pothos into the other planters. I have about 6 different variations of Pothos, but I chose this one because it complements the yellow sections in the Calathea. Next, I put the polycarbonate door onto the vivarium to complete the conversion. Then I gave it a good misting and peeled off the polycarbonate's protective plastic. Then I let the enclosure sit for about a month and a half. I did this because I wanted a few things to occur before stocking. I wanted the springtails to reproduce and thrive, I wanted the molding process of the grapewood to occur and pass over, although I didn't document this, grapewood always molds a lot, luckily the springtails took care of it in no time. I also wanted the plants to become acclimated and grow in a bit. Finally I wanted to add some isopods, but mine were producing heavily at the time I first built this enclosure. Anyways, here it is about a month and a half later. Overall, I really like the look of this setup and the overall progress of it. However, I decided that I would add a few more plants. First, I added some ficus pumula cuttings. Eventually, these will cover most of the background. The smaller leaves also add some nice contrast against the other larger leaves. Also, it is durable enough to handle crested geckos. Finally, here are some cuttings of wandering jute. I really like this plant, it grows very fast and will add nice pops of color to further diversify this design.
I also added this 50mm fan, which is set to run for 30 minutes every hour and a half. This will passively circulate the air throughout the enclosure. For lighting, I'm using a 60 watt LED equivalent light bulb. It only actually uses 9.5 watts. It is producing 840 lumens at 5000 Kelvin. Since crested geckos are nocturnal, full spectrum lighting is not required. This lighting solution only costs around $10 and does a great job growing plants. I have this light set to an 11 on and 13 off cycle. This pretty much concludes this vivarium build. All we have to do now is add Henry and let him enjoy his new home.